What's up everybody? Welcome back to Old Folks TV. Today, since we're still in quarantine, <laughs> we can't go anywhere, we're doing another DIY. Uh, this will be part two of doing the brakes, those Porsche brakes that we were working on before, uh, the 944 brakes. Uh, we're gonna get these, we got these cleaned up for the most part uh, last time. If you watched uh, part one, if you didn't, I'll put a link right there. You can catch part one before you watch part two. It might make it a little bit easier. Uh, so we're gonna get these the rest of the way cleaned up uh, just by hand. Uh, we're gonna throw some paint on there. Uh, I got my tried and true three-step process over here. Uh, you might be saying, oh, why don't you use uh, caliper paint? Because caliper paint is one coat and it goes on bare metal and I don't like it. They say it doesn't chip, but it chips. And uh, it doesn't smooth it out the way they say it does. It just doesn't look, in my opinion, doesn't look great. Um, we're not going with some big flashy color. We're gonna use a nice gunmetal gray. Not quite black, not quite aluminum. Um, it should look good, though, hopefully. Uh, with all the new black suspension parts that are eventually going on the bus. I was going to rebuild these today. Um, I was all excited because I got the notification that my parts had arrived. Uh, we got some new bearings for the uh, hub. We got the rebuild kit for the caliper. And I don't know what happened, but they sent me, obviously, the wrong size part. Um, I think that was my fault. I might have ordered for the wrong year, which can happen if you don't know the year of the parts you're buying for the car that they don't go on. Uh, I think I thought these were for 83, 928, but it turns out that these are actually 85 and up naturally aspirated 944 brakes. Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> That's who I got them from. I don't think he knew either. They were just in a bucket. Uh, so no rebuilding today, but that's okay. We'll get them painted up and ready to go. We gotta do that first anyways. Um, and then we can replace the rubbers on here and the bearings and the hub and all that. And we'll, we'll get into that in probably in part three. I'm also waiting on the brackets to come, which will allow these to bolt onto those bus spindles. Um, that should be delivered any day now coming from Canada. So we'll try to uh, get you at least to see how we mask these off. You don't get the paint where you don't want the paint. Um, certain parts need to stay clean. You can't paint them. Um, the rest of the parts you want painted, we want them to get clean, so I'll show you how to get them all cleaned up. Uh, then when the new parts come in, the brackets come in for the adding them to the bus and whatnot, then we'll get all that uh, bolted on and we'll get it on the bus. So let's get her all cleaned up. All right. So what I use uh, mainly to clean stuff up and get it ready for paint, uh, you've seen me use this stuff before. Uh, this is my TSP. Uh, trisodium phosphate. You can get it pretty much anywhere, uh, any hardware store, uh, anywhere you get your cleaning supplies. It's pretty cheap. It's like three or four dollars for a bottle. Um, and then you mix it with water. Uh, I cut it about half and half. Uh, it just gets rid of the grease and the goop and the nasty. And uh, so we're doing this on a clean table. So you just kind of spray it down. I've, some people say, oh, you got to wear gloves. And some people say, nah, it's not that big a deal. I'm not going to wear gloves today. I got to save those for the grocery store. <laughs> um, it's not real harsh chemicals. Doesn't smell real bad. Uh, but still do it in a, in a uh, well-ventilated area. But, you know, you pretty much spray it down, let it soak for a second, give it a wipe. And uh, it's going to get rid of all the the grimy stuff. Get rid of all the grease that was left on there after it got out of the uh, ultrasonic. The ultrasonic will get it clean, uh, get all the stuff out of the pores, but it's not going to get rid of the residue unless you keep running it through with clean water. Uh, and who has the time for that really these days? So usually just a good wipe with uh, TSP. We'll get those looking pretty, pretty good. Uh, you can hit them with a little brush too, if you want to. Uh, I usually don't. I don't find that you need it as long as you get a good wipe. Um, that primer that we're going to use is sort of made for 
engine parts, which are not known to be perfectly clean all the time. So it's a little more forgiving than regular primer. Uh, so you get away with a little bit of uh, grease, but you want to make sure you get them as clean as you can. I mean, you don't want to take any chances with a dirty, you know, a dirty metal trying to get primer on it. Because uh, then the paint won't stick. We all know how that goes. All right, I'm going to hit the rest of these. You don't have to watch. Uh, we'll come back when they're all clean. And then I will show you how to build the cheapest paint booth you've ever seen ever. So cheap. Works super good. Uh, and I'm going to show you how. Give me a second. Okay, so the easy way to do this is just with some regular old masking tape. Uh, I've got yellow and uh, a good exacto. I don't have a good exacto, I've got an okay exacto. Uh, the sharper your blade is, the easier this is gonna be for you. Luckily, I'm a trained professional. Uh, so what we're gonna do is cover up the parts we don't want any paint on. And that's mainly gonna be right here where the brake line plugs into it. This whole flat surface right here, I prefer to have no paint on that. Uh, this whole area down here where the uh, frame slides into the caliper piston cup. Uh, all this in here I prefer to have no paint. Uh, same on this side where the piston cup is. And then around here where this rubber seal goes, uh, we don't want any paint on that or inside the cup. So we're gonna tape all that off. I'm gonna leave the bleeder screw in there. Um, I'm gonna take this rubber thing off. Now I'm just gonna tape that because that's gonna keep those threads from getting painted. Um, but over here, it's okay to have paint. I don't mind that. So as long as it doesn't get inside. So we're going to tape this off really good. Uh, back here, we'll try to get some tape in there where it meets the thing. Because it's just going to get scratched off anyways if you paint it. So there's no sense in making something look bad. Um, even though you probably wouldn't see it when it's done. So it's real easy. You just take a piece of tape that's kind of the size. And then stick it over the part that you want taped and then I use the back of it to kind of push it in there and then we'll trim off the bits where we don't you know where we have it hanging over all right see so that's pretty good you know no paint's gonna get in where that slider's gonna go that's a big deal because if you get paint in this little area and you try to slide this big old frame on there the paint's going to take up some of the room and that's an already tight fit so you don't want to have to deal with that scraping all that paint back out of there that's how some people do it is they'll paint the whole thing and they'll go back with like a dremel or something and just clean out those spots that they didn't want paint that's extra work i'm not into extra work man i'm lazy there we go and then the last piece this is kind of this is kind of old tape, so doing the best we can here. This one, as you probably could have guessed, uh, we just go kind of right around the edge with it like that. We're gonna tape over the top of that just to be double sure that we don't have any paint in there. I've seen people take a rubber glove for this part too and uh, put a rubber band on there and rubber glove over it. But again, saving my gloves for the grocery store. <laughs> they are hard to find these days and we can't be wasting them on brake calipers. So there you go. Pretty much a fast and easy way to mask that stuff off let me reset the table we'll show you how to make that quick little spray booth and then we'll super fast time putting the primer the color and the clear on there we'll show you how we do that and a little trick that can help speed up that process a little bit um, so we'll get the table reset and we'll do that and i'll get the rest of this stuff masked off and you'll never know i was gone right so here you can see it really takes it's it's really worth your while to take your time um, to mask off the areas which don't need paint. 
Um, even the little holes for the pins where the sliders go, I uh, just kind of plugged them up with some paper towel. They're not threaded or anything. I just don't want paint down inside there. So as long as you tuck the edges, you'll get a good clean paint job there. You know, we got the cup, we got all our, you know, all our little slidey parts and everything taped off real nice. And then uh, on the frame, the only thing we don't want any paint on is where it slides, uh, you know, the caliper slides in there. Uh, that's gonna get brushed up real nice. So got it all nice and taped off. Little bit's not gonna hurt. We can always scrape it off with the blade after if you don't do a perfect job, but uh, again, it's really worth taking your time to mask it off rather than try and scrape it later and you're not going to be happy with it. Uh, so that's good there. Now the fun part. I will show you how to make your very own super cool paint booth for small parts. What you need is a box. Um, the bigger the better, but not really like a refrigerator box. You know, that's a little too big. Um, this might be a little small, but it's uh, it'll work for now. So what we do is we tape the sides, the flaps. You know, you don't have to do like a really good job because it's a box. You know, we're not trying to keep paint in there. We just trying to give ourselves a little windshield sort of deal. Just tape our, our sort of flaps in the up position. I'm gonna run out of tape. Just like that. Then you take a little screwdriver. These things are pretty much useless for anything other than this I've found. And we take a metal coat hanger. This is probably the hardest part to find uh, is the metal coat hanger. You'll need both parts. Uh, and then you just kind of unbend it and then rebend it. that well that's good enough then we uh, cut it so you have a sort of a, a hanger in there and then Sort of bend those into a little, a little hook. Do that evenly. That's fine. Doesn't have to be pretty. It's just gonna hold the part. The reason you want to do double like that is because what we're hanging in there is gonna be kind of heavy. And then I take the pieces that I've cut off, stick them underneath there, and that'll spread that sort of load out a little bit so that it doesn't just pull it right through the box. Take those. This is good for powder coating too. Um, if you have one of those little Eastwood spray on powder coat deals, this will contain it inside the box. That stuff has a tendency to just go everywhere. Um, and you can clip your negative to the coat hanger, hang your part from it, and then it transmits the ground into there and then uh, the paint will stick or the powder will stick. And you put it in the oven, you know, while the wife's out shopping or getting her nails done or whatever. Um, so that's that part. <laughs> and then we take the uh, hook part and we're gonna sort of fold that hook down so that it can hang in there. I might have cut this one a little too short. Um, and you kind of bend. I'm not doing a good job. 
sort of bend that sort of into a fashion there where you can hang your part, you see. And then uh, come around there so you can see it. But you hook your hook into those. Hey, what did I tell you? Just like that. And you hang your part in there like this. You see, now you can spray it and then you can unhook it and you can turn it around without touching it. And you can hook it this way, maybe. Bend those hooks a little more, but you get the idea. You can hang it, spray it, spin it, spray it, and uh, not have to touch it. So you can actually get the whole thing. You don't have to lay it down and wait for it to dry and then come back and do the other side. Um, so you can do that for everything except for the uh, caliper pot. You know, but luckily with this part, we have something we can sit it down on and something we can grab to turn it. So this one we'll just set in there and do it on the bottom. Uh, so I'll switch to fast hyper mode and you can watch me paint. got all the primer on there we got a, a few coats you know it's good and heavy on there and uh, yeah I just sprayed it a few minutes ago and I'm already touching it and it's already dry <laughs> and I'll show you how I did that good old heat gun uh, this way you're not waiting an hour two hours between coats uh, but once you know you have <laughs> all your primer on there good um, you've got every little piece every little corner where you want paint to be then uh, you know you know you're in good shape. The primer is very very important to making the paint stick. Uh, it's like the underwear of the paint, so you want it to be tight and clean and nice. Uh, then the paint will be nice and clean and tight. It'll be everywhere you want it. And then when you pull off your uh, your masking, you'll have good lines because the primer keeps the paint everything in line. It's it's just the way to go. So good primer is the foundation for good paint uh, on anything you do. Uh, so I'm going to put these back in the box. We're going to hit these with a little bit of that color and uh, we'll repeat the process. We'll dry them out with the heat gun a little bit and then uh, we'll get the little clear coat on there and do it again. And you'll see how nice these $20, you know, old crusty junkyard brakes. You'll see how nice they can actually look. All right, so there we go. Clean, primered, painted, clear coated. Worst thing to ever have to do is watch paint dry. <laughs> so we're not gonna. Um, I did warm them up a little bit. So they're not tacky anymore. So that means the bugs aren't gonna stick to them if there's any bugs in here. I don't see any around the lights, but that's the worst when you get the clear coat and they're just looking so good and you got bugs on them. Um, that's another thing the box helps with is it kind of keeps stuff from getting in there, dust and things uh, in the clear coat. So uh, keep them in the box. I'm gonna leave them in there overnight. It's a little bit cool tonight, but tomorrow's gonna be warm. Uh, when I get off of work, I'll come back and they'll be nice. Uh, you know, you really don't want to handle them once you've put the clear on. You don't want to touch them uh, for at least 24 hours if you can avoid it. Even if they're not tacky, that paint's not fully, fully cured. All those layers got to bind together. So just leave them alone for a little while. You know, so we don't get to see them built today. Uh, but in part three, hopefully I'll have all my correct seals and everything and my rotors and my pads and all my hardware will be here. It'll be super nice. I can show you how the whole kit goes together. And uh, we'll have one nice one, you know, built for you. We can compare it to the other one. I purposely left the other one untouched so we can see, you know, what it looks like when we're done versus what we started with. And the transformation is, it's going to blow your mind. Super great. So uh, that was easy. You know, this was just the painting part. Luckily, we got everything clean before. We'll get them assembled next time. So you have to come back and watch. Uh, in a couple weeks, we'll do part three. Super fun. I had fun. Uh, if you like what you see here, give me a subscribe, 
hit the uh, notification little bell, ring that little tiny bell over there and get the dinghy. Uh, every time we get a new episode, we get them every Saturday morning so you can wake up to some fresh content. Uh, so that was it. Thanks for watching.